It's round two of the Need for Speed Formula Drift competition, and this time, we're sliding through the infamous drift loop at Road Atlanta. This course has crazy elevation changes, a sick high-speed entry, and a couple of different track surfaces to change things up. We're gonna take a look at some drift fashion. Yeah. <laughs> talk to some drivers. The judges are looking for no fear. You know what, we just bitch way too much. Hopefully, I'm gonna win. But it's the combination of insane drifting and the hardcore fans of the South that are gonna make an awesome round two of Formula Drift. What's up, Drift Nation? I'm Rossi Morielli here in the dirtest south at Road Atlanta in Brazelton, Georgia. Trying to find out, can the local boys come out of the woods and challenge our top tier drivers? I don't know. We'll find that out later. But right now, let's go check out my buddies, Maylene Ramey and Emeka Nadi. Hey, Rossi. I'll be down in the pits talking to the guys as they come off the track. Yo, what's up, Rossi? I'm going to be out here hanging out with the fans to see what the Dirty South thinks of the drift scene. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. The drift loop here at Road Atlanta was specifically created to be the site of the inaugural Formula Drift in 2004. Today's competition begins with 32 pre-qualified drivers attacking the course in judge single runs. These runs are scored on a point system developed by Formula D and only the top half will qualify for the 16 available spots in the tandem portion of our event. Tandem is where head-to-head -head battles come to life and sets drifting apart from traditional motorsports. A lot of our guys were here last year and might have a slight advantage over the others, but there are a lot of new cars and a bunch of amped up fans here in Atlanta. Road Atlanta is home to some of the fastest GT cars in the world, but this weekend, it's all about the drift. The course starts after a long downhill straightaway and the first turn is a high-speed left-hander with a clipping point marked by the orange cone. When the cars are past this point, they have to transition to the uphill right-hand entry of the loop and the second clipping point. The drivers then flip back to the left and up another slight hill and out of the loop and back to the third clipping point. Next, it's out to the straightaway where they should be able to hold their line and drift down the hill and into another high-speed left-hander. The final clipping point is the same as the first, and the cars charge back up the hill to the start finish line. Give it up, Rod. New Jersey was cold, out here it was hot, and then, like, of course, we complained way too much. Like, we were saying that in the VIP rooms, we are like, hey, get us some heaters, and then now we're like, Get us some AC, get us some fans. Like, see a couple of the guys hiding in the porter potty, the VIP porter potties? That's AC in there. This track is very, very fun, fast track, in about 100 mile an hour on the first turn entry out there. It's a fun track. It's, it looks easier than what it is, actually. It's definitely a fun course, and it's challenging because, you, you know, we're getting pretty high entry speeds at the bottom, and, and so, you know, it's good, good fun. <laughs> Long, straight, and down here, and then almost 90 degree corner, so go fast and break so hard, you know. We've got a very high speed entry. I'm in top and third, about 95 mile an hour. Uh, you get a pretty good speed going in, but you can't really stop the car before the first 90 degree left. You really have to focus on your uh, speed control coming in and out the drift because uh, it's really tricky out there. Yank the e-brake or pop the clutch, whatever the technique you use, and get it sideways and fly down there. And and they have the first apex. It does pose an issue, especially with a car that's a little heavier, like going down the hill. Of course, you pick speed up a lot faster. You break it sideways, and it just wants to keep going right now. Going into that left hander, you got to hit your, you got to start the drift early, because if you don't, then you're going to run out of room. The first corner is, has a lot of rubber when, you, when you're going to flick it. And then you come into the apex corner, there's less rubber there. So you really grip it first, and then it gets really slippery. So I think that's where you guys are going to be able to, to see this. Um, <laughs> Maybe some action, some accident, <laughs> if you're looking for that. Road Atlanta built the D just for drifting, and uh, it's still a little bit slippery, and as you're going into it, in the middle of it, there's like a slight, like, five degree uphill, and that flats out, so 
brakes. It's got to be really good with your brakes on that around that area, or very, really good throttle control, so you stay on your line instead of pushing you out. You're basically just flying until you hit that horseshoe, where you gotta back it down, and then coming down that hill, you gotta just wrap on it again to, to extend that very long, long length. It's very difficult, but it's exciting, it's scary. <laughs> we just have to try and step up to the plate. You know, nothing else to do that. Have big cojones. <laughs> Coming up, we're going to take a look at the course of the judges' eyes, meet a local drifter, and check out the round of 32. Maylene here at Road Atlanta for the Need for Speed Formula D event. I'm here with the official judges of this event. Hey guys, how are you? Hello. So why don't we go around and you can introduce yourself. Hello, my name is uh, Tarzan Yamada, Japanese judgment, number one. I'm Edward Lowe from Road and Track Speed Magazine, U.S. judge. I'm Uchi, special judge. And I'm Ken Takahashi. U.S. judge. All right guys, for somebody who's never been to a drift event or never watched drifting, how do you break down the judging? Basically, drift is, to be high speed, entry speed, and angle. Drift angle and line, clipping point, clipping point, clipping point, and performance, looking good performance. Let me try to translate. I think I got it, OK? Uh, entry speed, uh, line, what was this one? Angle, 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 and then performance. And that includes crowd reaction, your reaction. Fire noise, yeah, everything. Every, everything that makes it exciting, you know, how far out they get, how close, when it, when it comes time to tandem, is how close they get to each other, you know, how out of control but in control they look, you know, the whole, the whole nine yards. What are you looking for specifically out of the four things? Is there one category that's more important to you? Tire smoke. Oh, very good. <laughs> I watch these guys and I watch the crowd. When there's a performance out there, like at New Jersey, there's a couple times there was some passing going on, and all the judges stood up. And you see all everybody in the stands stand up and kind of like take a breath, and then they start cheering crazy, like crazy. I mean, that is the kind of stuff. That is sort of the ultimate, you know, factor. That that excitement level. This is the overall layout of the track for Road Atlanta today's uh, Formula D event. So they're driving down. Okay, this this X, make this X big. This X, what is that? This is the first clipping point. The clipping point is where the drivers are gonna be targeting to try to hit when they're going into a turn sideways. As they start going sideways around here, they're gonna go up the hill and they're gonna start transferring their weight around this side to the second clipping point, up at the entry of the horseshoe. As they go around, they'll be going around in a full drift Outside. on the outside to the third clipping point. So basically there are target areas at which the driver is going to be looking at as they're lining up their line. So when he hits that, then they're going to be going back down the hill, the outside to the inside of this clipping area, back to their first original clipping area, and then they're back out. So what makes this track different from the other tracks? Like we were just at Wall Speedway. How is that different from this? Wall Speedway actually is a, it's a short oval. This is uh, Road Atlanta, this is a very famous uh, road course. The big problem at DeWall Speedway was they had a uh, oval transition that they had to contend with. They would come off a bank into a flat section and the cars would get unsettled. This course is a lot smoother, but there's an elevation change. They come from high, down low, and they have to climb a little bit and try to hold the drift. All right, guys, thank you so much. Let's see who's gonna take it home today. The first assignment for the judges is to score the round of 32 single runs. The drifters that survive the scrutiny here become part of the tandem elimination round. The round of 32 in Atlanta begins with Ryan Turk having a little trouble in his Krylon colored S13 and Matt Bass blowing a bunch of red tire smoke without linking the course. Kim Gushi's definitely gotten the hang of his new Mustang and it shows as he moves on to the round of 16. Rob Fleming's burning red around the loop and crowd favorite Ross Petty is smoking out the crowd with his rotary power. Vaughn getting Jr. qualifies in his debut with his new Mustang, but it's hard to see through all the smoke.
Cone killer Sego Yamamoto is showing everyone the clippy point in the first turn and easily graduates to the next round, where he'll see Big Ben Schwartz, who is putting on a consistent show in his S14. Reese is killing the course and is headed to the tandems while Tony Schultz is having a spot of trouble in the loop. Local boy Scott Bowles is a privateer going to battle with some of the top names in Formula D and put on a show in his first gen Mazda RX-7. Not the easiest car to drift. It drifts kind of like a Mustang. It's such a short wheelbase and it gets snap oversteer. So if you're not really fast on the wheel, it'll come around on you. Uh, I drove in the last, last year Formula Drift and pretty much anything in Atlanta area. You know, I'm just out here to do it. You know, I don't do it because it's cool. I do it because it's fun, you know? It's what we like to do. I mean, we're out here suck or not, you know? I'll be out there doing it. I'm just gonna keep drifting every day, you know? Not gonna stop. Andy Yen is having another disappointing day. It looks like he's having some mechanical issues. Dr. Walker is taking time to explore the kitty litter, and Casper Canula is showing us why he finished third in New Jersey, moving on again in Atlanta. Tony Angelo is also in with a solid run in a borrowed street spec S13, and Dai Yoshihara is shining a spotlight on his new paint job on his pack rim S13. Taka Ayano is trying to steal the corner cones, and last year's champ, Sam Cubanet, is looking confident in the Viper he claims is still getting dialed in. Dai, Sam, and Taka all qualified for the tandems again as expected. Hiro Sumida's heavy four-door chaser is proving hard to slow down, and Mike Peters is throwing down in the Bubba Drift El Camino and qualifies for the first time this year. Chris Forsberg annihilated the front fascia of his S15 in the middle of an awesome qualifying run, and Alex Pfeiffer's got his top down and his foot to the floor, sliding his RSR S2000 into the round of 16. Rounding up the top 16 were the always tough Calvin Wan and Kenji Yamanaka. After the round of 32, here's a look at who made the cut for the first round of tandem battles. Hey, when we come back, we're gonna separate the men from the boys with the round of 16, a little tandem action. Do not go anywhere. All right, to find out who's impressing the judges in the qualifying rounds, why not just go to the man himself, the voice of drifting, Jared Deand. I got him right here to my side. How lucky am I, Jared? What's happening, baby? Tell me about the qualifying rounds. Who's looking good? I don't know. It's a fierce battle. The competition's gotten so much better from last year and from last round even. So we got the new guys. JR just debuted his brand new 05 Mustang, right. supercharged beast. Obviously, Drift Alliance. He's rocking the Boyd Connington wheels the whole nine. We got Calvin Wan just mashing the throttle, throwing up some serious smoke. All the Falcon guys, Drift Alliance guys. But you got Reese Millen, the Kiwi. Like, he's just locked down. Always, set. always. Who else you got? I mean, you got Alex Pfeiffer, a crowd favorite. Sammy Lubinet, he's having some troubles with the car, but you know what? We're having fun. Road Atlanta's having fun. This is rock and roll. Tell me about this. Last last event, the track in Wall, New Jersey. You know, high walls, coming down to flat. You know, making that transition was tough for him. This track, totally different. What are the drivers dealing with? This is a traditional road course, you know? I mean, they have American Le Mans racing here, they have open wheel racing, mm -hmm. and we specifically paved this horseshoe just for drifting. So this is a traditional road course, and we're, we're given the best format possible to give everybody good drifting. There you go, you heard from the man himself, Jared Deanna, the voice of drifting. Let's go check out the round of 16. The round of 16 here in the ATL is upon us. Solo runs now give way to eight tandem battles with the winner of each showdown moving on. Coming out for the first death match are two FD favorites. Qualifying at number two today is Reese Millen, the rally driving Kiwi from California. He took the event in New Jersey and right now is taking his points leading Pontiac GTO up against the Falcon rubber of Drift Alliance's Tony Angelo, whose team car broke down and is currently driving a borrowed street spec Nissan S13. Here we go, this is our first ten of battle. Tony Angelo, Reese Millen. Reese Millen all over him. Into the horseshoe, really tight on the horseshoe, good consistent smoke. Reese coming up on his trailer hitch. Woo! Going back, Reese smelling all over him. Tony giving Reese a show. Here we go, Tony Angelo, Reese Millen. Reese Millen's gonna lead, pulling away from Tony Angelo. Reese Millen throwing up some smoke for Tony on a tight line to turn. Tony takes out the cone. 
Reese Mellon swinging wide into the horseshoe with Tony on him. Give it up for Reese and Tony. Tony getting out of line in the horseshoe and Reese pulling away. I think we have a winner, but I'm gonna talk to the judges. Give it up for Reese Millen and Tony Angelo. All right, Reese, we just got word. You're advancing to the next round. Nice. You and Tony were the first two on the tandem run. So how'd you do out there? Great, you know, I can't say enough about the uh, Yokohama Pontiac GTO. Um, this track is demanding. We didn't qualify last year. We qualified second and made it advance from the top 16 to the top eight. So really happy with the way the car is. So while you're, you lost your third gear, you had some problems with your car. How's it running now and what did you do to it? Brilliant. You know, we worked, the crews worked really hard in the last three weeks to make some changes to the transmission. Um, it enables me to drive the car I like to and, and be aggressive and, and we'll keep pushing. All right, I'm here with Tony Angelo, who just finished the first run of the tandem competition. You had a tough competitor. Yeah. Reese Millen, how'd it go? Uh, it was good. I was driving a borrowed car that I've never driven before until yesterday. So I was kind of, I had some pretty long odds against me. But uh, I just went out and had fun. How was it different from your ride? Uh, it's much less horsepower mm -hmm. and less grip, actually. So things happen a little slower. But uh, it's pretty tricky with the low power to get all the way through this course. It's a battle of the underdogs with Mike Peters, a.k.a. Bubba Drift, taking his automatic El Camino to tandem battle with last week's third place finisher, Casper Canool, and his Nitto Tires Monster Fabrications S14. Looks like Bubba Drift and Mike Peters is gonna be leading. Mike Peters cuts in on the inside of turn one. Takes a good line, a tight line with good angle, Bubba Drift. Casper sucking up on Mike. Oh, Casper gets out of shape! Mike Peters, Bubba Drift! As long as he stays on the track, he's got an advantage. Casper Cano coming down the hill. Nitto Tires, S14, Monster Fabrication. Followed by Mike Peters in the Bubba Drift. What do you guys say? Here comes Casper Cano pulling away. Bubba Drift nowhere to be found. Casper not even bothered by Mike Peters. Casper Cano on his game. Bubba Drift way behind. He's got to play catch up here. Casper Canoe running it like it's his job. Give it up for Casper and Bubba. Bubba nowhere to be found. Obviously, Casper overpowering the automatic LS1. I'm talking to the judges here, Ken Takahashi, the judge up here. What are we going to do here? Well, obviously, on the second round, there was a big gap in the race, but the spin out, it was the fatal blow. So the win has to go to uh, Bubba Drift. Bubba Drift! What happened out there? Oh, God. Um, I don't want to say bad things, but it was slow. Um, the car I went up against with was extremely slow. I mean, I'm used to going flat out, but, you know. Looking back, is there anything you could have done different, you think? I think so. I got a little bit overzealous, and I just wanted to go in for the kill. And not this time. Not this time. Mike, yes. AKA Bubba Drift. Great job out there. What did you do to win this? First run out, I was like, just try to play consistent and hope that he would maybe mess up. And uh, I saw him spin in the red flag, and I was like, OK, round one, I got that. What speeds were you going out there? Because Casper was saying something about high speeds versus low speeds. I mean, how do you prefer to take a run? My, my car is automatic, and my e-brake doesn't really work. We hooked it up before we left Texas. It didn't really work out. Um, so I told him before we went, I was like, hey, dude, my car, I, I really have to take a big faint to enter the first corner. Have you qualified before? Honestly, this is my first year competing. Wall is my first Formula D event in this car. This is my second event, and I mean, I just, man, I'm really pumped for the rest of this year. So after the first couple battles, we've got Reese Millen in the RMR GTO moving on, and underdog Mike Peters in the Bubba Drift El Camino upsetting his way into the round of eight. Coming up after the break, a mech is over at the car show, and we're going back into the tandem round of 16. T-Mobile is on the spot here in Hotlanta, baby, for the second Formula D event of the season.
The pro drift cars can take thousands of hours to build and maintain. The time spent on the whips out in the car show can be just as extreme, and all for the sake of turning some heads. Emeka is checking out a sick Mercedes SLK. Is this the first time you've ever done this to a Mercedes Benz? Uh, this is uh, my fourth Mercedes I've done. How long have you been doing this? I started when I was 16. Now, because it's a luxury car, is it harder for you to find the, the necessary parts and components that you would need? Yes, the advantage of this car is it was released in Germany six months before the United States, so some of the parts I did get from Germany, everything else I had to make. How, how'd you make them all yourself? Fiberglass and Bondo, baby. When I go down the road, the, the ladies are always looking, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you gotta believe it. More success than maybe a Honda Civic? <laughs> Unless you got a really nice Civic, I don't know. <laughs> you wanna share some stories with us? You know, you'll get strange girls leaving notes on your car all the time, like... They leave notes on your car? Oh yeah, all the time. It may be a little while before we see a Teutonic Terror like a Drift Benz, but in the meantime, we're gonna get down with a little American muscle in Sam Cubanet's Mopar-powered Viper. Cubanet didn't make it past the round of 16 in Wall, but qualified third here in Atlanta. He's taking his SRT-10 up against the number 14 qualifier, Big Ben Schwartz in his Falcon-sponsored S13. Sam Cubanet, Ben Schwartz in the S14. This is Ben Schwartz. Oh, Ben, get out of shape. Sam didn't want to hit him. Samuel Hubenet's gonna have the advantage. Here we go, Samuel Hubenet. Whoa, totally, what's the deal? Ben Schwartz wasn't even ready, pulling away. Samuel Hubenet coming into turn one. Ben Schwartz still at the top of the hill, but Sam Hubenet, this is a little demo for you guys. Give it up for Sam. Mopar Speed Dodge Viper SRT 10. Give it up for Sam one more time, please. He can't hear Yokohama tire smoke. Tapping the rev limiter. This is a little demo for you. Ben Schwartz flipped his car around. Kitty litter probably did some damage. What's going on with the car today? The car's running good. Honestly, I just got really nervous because I knew he was right there on me and uh, never went up against him before. And uh, just pushed myself a little too hard, went off the course, and uh, I don't know. So it was, it was all me. So you were up against Ben. You yeah. won, you're competing, you're on to the next round, but what really happened out there? Uh, ben uh, was leading the first round and he did spin out, so then that was my advantage. Then uh, second round, I guess his gearbox uh, broke down, so. Okay, well we see what happens in the next round. Yes! Thanks Congratulations! This is chiropractor and lone AE86 driver Taka Ayano taking his 20 valve, 160 horsepower Corolla up against the unproven and often broken Falcon Tires S15 of last year's third place overall drifter, Chris Forsberg. Here we go, this is Taka Ayano, the little engine that could, the Corolla hatchback. And we got Chris Forsberg and the Nissan S15 coming in. Oh, Chris getting out of shape, Taka pulling away. Little engine that could takes out that clipping point. But Chris trying to play catch up. Chris gets out of shape. Taka ain't no thing. Just putting away. He's gonna run away with the advantage in the first round. Give it up for Takayano. Here comes Chris Forsberg giving him a fair shot at sucking up on his back bumper. Chris Forsberg swinging wide in a turn one. Woo! Coming, wow, aggressive angle. Taka just straight line through turn one. No angle from Taka. Chris coming into the horseshoe, throwing the smoke screen for Taka. Taka just trying to be over him. No way, Taka! All over Chris! Chris and Taka back and forth, but Taka has no angle. Chris, we're giving it to Takayano, the judge has spoken. Takayano, and again, the reason being, Chris spun out. Taka did not spin out. Okay, Taka, you're advancing to the next round. You were up against Chris Forsberg. Tell me about the run out there. What happened? Ah, uh, okay. I tried to run as much as I can because I got only 160 horsepower, and uh, I screwed up the the one I'm, I was following. But uh, I was lucky enough I could go next round. So, what's your secret? Uh, I won't tell just, anybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just uh, heavy foot on the right. That's about it. With a heavy foot on the right? Yeah. Okay. Shh. What happened out there with Taka? 
Um, well, basically, my car's been snapping axles and differentials all weekend. So um, when I went into the first turn, I just like it hit the steering lock like right away and it just overshot it. And then by the time I got to the horseshoe, I just spun it because the horseshoe's so slick over there. So. All right. Well, you did the best you could. Good job. Moving on to meet Reese and Bubba in the eight will be the crazy Swede Sam Cubanet and the 160 horsepower Hachi Roku of Takayano. The first half of the round of 16 is over. When we come back, we're going to find out which eight are moving on. What's up, Drift Lovers? We're back in Georgia at Road Atlanta. Now, our first course in Wall, New Jersey was staged in a tight oval. But here at Road Atlanta, the course is, well, a road course. Different drivers are going to attack this road course with different styles. So we caught up with a few of them to explore their sideways strategy. I'm going to go as fast as I can down the, down the straightway. Uh, you know, to really impress the judge with high, high speed. And obviously, I'll try to nail those apexes that they're asking for. Well, this car with the power and my lead foot is going to lay out a ton of smoke. These dudes are going to be not able to breathe or see. Maybe they'll pass out and go off track or something. I'm just go as fast as possible. That's my style. There's the main passing zone is the, uh, the horseshoe area. So for tandem-wise, you want to actually stay real close to the horseshoe. Hug that tight all the way through around so you don't leave an open space and then just cars back down the hill as fast as you can. First of all, I'll go to the car owner and say sorry if I hit your car. Other than that, that's it. Stay close, stay smooth. You know, last night in practice, I paired up with a number of other drivers. Um, each of them have high qualities, either a high-speed entry or big angle or big entry out of the corners as far as grip. So I'd stage with each one of those people to gauge where I stacked up, and uh, we feel pretty comfortable. Who's got the right strategy to make it to the round of eight? Let's go to the track. Here's Vaughn Gittin Jr., member of Drift Alliance, rocking his brand new Falcon Tires 05 Mustang in its first ever tandem battle, going up against the new guy. Straight from Japan, Kenji Yamanaka driving Rotora's badass wide-body S13.5. Oh, gosh, we got JR getting and Kenji Yamanaka coming in. Kenji Yamanaka in the Whoa, JR getting that shit. Kenji Yamanaka pulling away from JR. Good line coming to the horseshoe. JR broken. Kenji Yamanaka into the horseshoe. Throw the red flag. Kenji's got to stop. Now JR flips it on. What's the deal? Light it up for JR. JR obviously having some technical difficulties. Who wants to hear that thing get loud? JR broken. Flip the power switch on or something. Woo! Here comes JR again. Who wants to see JR do well? Here comes JR again coming into turn one. Oh man, getting out of shape. Kenji got on. Get up for JR again. Kenji. Letting his game. JR goes across the grass. Kenji Yamanaka. He's obviously, if he stays on the track, JR mad as heck. Kenji. Kenji Yamanaka. Obvious winner. Give it up for Kenji Yamanaka. This is a great matchup between two of the most mellow lead push you'll ever meet. Sliding Hawaiian Alex Pfeiffer, who took the number two spot in Wall, has been suffering technical difficulties all weekend. He's taken his bruised RSR S2000 against Daijiro Yoshihara and the freshly rebuilt Pacific Rim S13. Daijiro Yoshihara's in the lead. Alex Pfeiffer having to chase. Daijiro swinging wide into turn one. Good line, Alex smoking, but no angle. Daijiro pulling away from Alex. Good line for Dai. Alex too far behind. Dai needs to keep his speed up or Alex is going to catch up. Good line for both the guys. Daijiro on his game. Alex a little too far behind. Daijiro on his line. Give it up for Daijiro and Alex. That's the tandem battle. It's fine. It's the best run we've seen all day. And Daijiro has the fastest entry speed of any of these guys out here. Alex Pfeiffer swings it wide, throws up some dirt in Daijiro's face. Whoa, Alex moves the cone out of the way. Takes a little too tight in the line. Alex swinging wide, but tight on the horseshoe. Alex Pfeiffer on the middle horseshoe. Whoa, cutting Daijiro off 
in the horseshoe. Put him up in smoke. Can't even see Nigeria. Alex, lighting up Dai, but Dai right behind him. And Nigeria Yoshihara moves on to the grade A. Dai and Alex were just running against each other, and they're still friends. So it turned Ooh. out well. However, Dai actually won. What happened out there, Dai? Uh, I just lucky. <laughs> he did a mistake. No, no, he had faster entry speed than I did. That's thank why you, he thank won. you, thank you. So tell me about the first run versus the second run. Uh, first run, I go just I don't you know I don't know what's going on. What about yeah. you? So what about, how was it? You you had faster entry than me. Yeah, yeah. So I was always trying to catch up to you, and I never caught up to you. So on the second lap, I tried to go faster, but I still couldn't get <laughs> at the speed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I just go catch him, you know. And then he doesn't, he kind of doesn't work so good initiation. So he missed the con, hit the con. The S2000 doesn't really like the above 5,000 and fourth gear. It's like too close to the rev limiter. Like the, the gear ratios are a little bit different on this track. So they're in like middle of fourth gear. I'm on the top of fourth gear since I have a six speed transmission. So the, the entry speed for my car is a little bit too fast. It didn't have the torque to get it sideways quickly. So Dai Yoshihara takes his place in the eight next to fellow Japanese national Kenji Yamanaka. Coming up, we find out the rest of the ladder of the round of eight.